question five is also a three-point mapping problem. So in this case, we're going to determine which gene is in the middle, and then figure out what the distances are between all of the genes. So when you look at this data, uh, again, the parental combinations of alleles are always going to be the most abundant. Now, in this particular problem, you'll notice that these are not kind of grouped in the way we've seen them in the past. So the most abundant are clearly these guys up here and these guys down here. So these are the parental combinations of alleles. And in order to do this sort of a problem, we want to compare these parental combinations of alleles to the double recombinants. So the double recombinants are going to be the rarest ones. So that makes this one a double recombinant and this one a double recombinant. So just like in the last problem, we want to compare a parental to a double recombinant. And in this case, we can see that with these three genes, Y, F, and V, that if we compare these two down here, we can see that Y sort of matches, F matches, V doesn't. So V is the gene which is in the center. So if we draw this map then, we have V in the middle and Y on one side and F on the other side. And again, the order of these things doesn't really matter. You could flip this end for end. The important thing is that V is in the center. So if you were to compare these parentals and double recombinants, again, you would see the Y matches, F matches, and V doesn't, which puts V in the middle. So the second part of this problem then is to draw a map with the distances indicated. So in this case, uh, my recommendation is just to calculate these two short distances individually. So if we wanted to calculate the distance, say, between Y and V, this first distance, then basically we just need to find uh, the number of recombinants divided by the total which is going to be 10,000 in this case, times 100. So in this case, the number of recombinants we have to look for. So in the parental combinations of alleles, we find that Y and V are either both mutant in this parent or both wild type in this parent. So we want to look through these other classes and find ones where Y and V don't match in their wild or mutant status. So either uh, we're going to find ones that where Y is mutant and V is wild type or vice versa. So the double recombinant here, so Y and V no longer match. There's been a recombinant, so we would add those guys. So 72. So Y and V are still both mutant, so this is not a recombinant. Y, V is wild type, Y is mutant, so these are recombinants, plus 7, no, plus 6, 78, plus, again, Y and V no longer match, so 690. Uh, if we go down to this one, they're both still wild type. Here, uh, Y, and V have had a recombination event, 60. And here, this is one of the parentals, they're both wild type. So this number divided by 10,000 is going to be our map distance, which works out to be 15 centimorgans. So this distance then would be 15. Now for the other distance, if we want to go between V and F, we have the same sort of formula. So we just need to look for the recombinants between V and F. So again, in the parentals, V and F start out as either both mutant or both wild type. So if we look through these, uh, the first one, these double recombinants, we see that we've had a recombination event, so we'll add those. 72 plus here we've had a recombination event so we start out both mutants we have one mutant one wild type so 1024 plus here they're both wild type no recombination here they're both mutant no recombination here again we've switched there's been a recombination event one's mutant one's wild type so we add 1044 
44. And then finally, this double recombinant. We've had a recombination event here. So if we add that all up, divided by 10,000, and multiply by 100, we would get 22 centimorgans. And if you want the distance between y and f, the simplest thing to do is just to add these two together. But as I've mentioned in class, if you really wanted to calculate this, you would have to remember to count these double recombinants twice, since they've each had two recombination events instead of only one. So for those of you who like to look for patterns, I've mentioned this in class before, but the general, uh, general pattern with these is when you're calculating these two short distances, so one of the short distances here, one of the short distances here, what you'll find is that you're going to count the double recombinants in both of these calculations. So you notice that they pop up at both times because the double recombinants have had a recombination event in this interval and in this interval so they come up in both of them and then the single recombinants only come up in one calculation or the other so this 678 or 690 those are recombination events that have occurred on this side uh, so this plus this we've had recombinations that occur over here and then this 1024 and 1044, the other group are going to show up because they've had recombination events in this interval. So this is the general pattern then, is that you'll count the double recombinants in both calculations, but then the other two classes of recombinants will count only in one or the other.